Hey everyone, welcome to Literary Paradise. Today I'll talk about Stopping by Woods on a Snowy Evening, a beautifully penned poem by four times Pulitzer Prize winner American poet Robert Frost in 1922. Robert Frost is a giant of American literature who is also studied as a fabulous nature poet and as a regional poet. So friends, the speaker of this poem is on his way to home, but suddenly he stops as the snowfall starts. The beauty of nature appeals to his eyes and he feels himself taken into the charming world of wild and mysterious nature. Now look at the poem. Whose woods these are, I think I know. His house in the village though, he will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. So friends, this stanza introduces the setting of this poem. See, our poet is riding his horse, okay? But suddenly, a heavy snowfall forces him to stop there and he starts brooding over his surroundings. So the speaker of this poem is probably a villager. And the place where he has stopped belongs to a person from the same village. Here, our speaker fears of his presence for a short while as he can feel our poet's stay improper at his property. But soon, he assures himself that at this chilly moment of this dark hour, the landowner won't bother himself to come out and watch over his area. Next stanza. My little horse must think it cure to stop without a farmhouse near. Between the woods and frozen lake, the darkest evening of the year. Now poet starts depicting the expressions of his horse who finds the speaker's behavior strange as he cannot find it rational to stop in a lonely place with no homes and no people nearby. It's a beautiful view indeed that the snowfall has decorated the entire forest and the frozen lake is enhancing the beauty of this forest. Friends, the darkest evening of the year refers to the winter solstice. It falls about 21st December. Stanza 3 He gives his harness bells a shake to ask if there is some mistake. The only other sounds the sweep of easy wind and downy flake. So friends, the love of our poet for animals is revealed as see how he is trying to decipher the signals being given by his horse. Of course, this horse is not able to figure out the speaker's purpose of abruptly stopping at a lonely place at this time. Now the speaker, who is thrilled to see the beauty of forest covered with snow, suddenly hears the bells woven on the harness of his horse. It seems as if this horse has willingly shaken his harness bells so that he could bring our speaker out of the wild ecstasy he has been feeling right now. Apart from the bell sound, he can also hear some pretty noises like he can hear the sound of snowflakes slowly falling down on the ground as the wind shakes the tree branches nearby. Now let's see this poem with a different perspective friends. See, we can say that the horse in this poem stands for reality as he reacts when he sees his owner is engrossed into the world of beauty and imagination. This connotation becomes clearer in the final stanza which reveals as how our poet realizes his worldly duties as soon as he hears these bells ringing. Now I'm reading the final stanza. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I have promises to keep and miles to go before I sleep and miles to go before I sleep. Friends, the last two lines of this poem are so motivational that they have been frequently quoted everywhere. See, the beginning lines of this stanza reveal the excitement felt by our poet which is stimulated by beholding the beautiful scenario around him. 
It seems as if the woods have put on white and the night has become too alluring that the poet has forgotten everything about his personal life. But the bells of the horse act like an alarm to our poet and drag him out from the tranquil and mesmerizing world of nature. These jingling sounds of harness bells remind him of his promises, his responsibilities, and his obligations to the world. In the last lines, we can see as how our poet has become conscious of his existence and how he pulls himself together to achieve his ends with a firm determination. He resolves himself to perform all his duties before he dies. Friends, here sleep stands for death, okay? So finally, our poet has realized that beautiful things around us can give us temporary relief in between the long and tiresome journey of life. But to make both ends meet and to make our life run smoothly, we all have to give up a life of pleasure and peace. We have to struggle and sacrifice a lot. And thus, we all go through hard times to achieve our ends. So we have seen how at the end of this poem our speaker prefers reality to his fantasy, toil to pleasure, and life to illusion. Thank you friends. If you like this lecture, hit the like button and do subscribe to our channel.